Hey everyone, hope you guys enjoyed your weekend and are ready for some more chemistry labs this week. Um, this week we're doing a, a fun lab. Uh, this is a titration lab. Um, what we're looking at is um, the acid-base neutralization reaction. So when you have an acid and you have a base, um, particularly the two we're working with is sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. The sodium hydroxide um, is a strong base and the hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. So what we're looking at is the neutralization between the two. Um, as you may have covered in class, um, a neutralization from an acid and a base produces um, a salt and water. So the salt that we're going to produce is sodium chloride, which is just your average table salt, and then water. So the way that we're doing this um, is we're using a burette. Now a burette can be kind of a tricky thing. Um, they are, their numbers are graduated uh, with zero being at the top of the burette and uh, 50 being at the bottom. So you have to take that into account when you're trying to read your numbers. So um, what we're doing this week is we are determining the molarity of an unknown concentration of acid. So the way that we're doing that is we have sodium hydroxide with um, a known concentration. So for this week, um, it's going to be 0.117 molar. And we have hydrochloric acid with an unknown concentration. So we are going to fill our burettes with the uh, sodium hydroxide, um, the, our strong base with our known concentration, and um, we are going to titrate out into a beaker full of hydrochloric acid, a known um, uh, volume of hydrochloric acid, um, and we're going to be looking for the endpoint. Now we're using phenolphthalein as an indicator, and it will be um, it turns a brilliant, brilliant um, pink when it's in a basic solution. So when you're looking for your endpoint, you want it to just barely be pink. Now, when I say barely, I mean so light that if you hold it up to a paper, you can just barely tell it's pink. If you've gotten to where it's this brilliant pink, um, then you've gone and you've overshot your endpoint. So the best way that you can do this um, without overshooting your endpoint is you're going to do three trials. Your first one's going to be rough. Um, it's going to be one that you're going to uh, probably overshoot your titration the first time. Um, so if you're looking at your burette, the way that you're going to read it is right here at the meniscus. And you can see that it's right below, and so you're going to say 30 point uh, about two. So, um, or, sorry, you're going to read it the opposite direction. So it'll be 31.8. Uh, so you're going to look at that and you're going to say, okay, that is my initial uh, volume. So you're going to record that and then um, you're going to titrate it out and it's going to look very similar to this. So you're not going to go very quickly at first. You're going to do it very slowly. And so you're going to wait, and you'll see the drops start to come. You can do it a little bit fast at first, um, but as soon as you start to see the pink occur, then you're going to want to slow it down, and you're going to want it to go just carefully because the endpoint can be reached in just the matter of one drop. So you're going to be swirling it, and if you see pink and it starts to stay, then turn it off, swirl it around, and if the pink stays and doesn't go away, then you know you've reached your end point, okay? But if it doesn't, then you're going to do one drop, which is very can be a little bit difficult to do. So one singular drop, just like that, and then you're going to swirl it around. If the pink stays, then you're going to, uh, then you're done. If it doesn't, then you need to do one more drop until you've reached it. It's very much like the Avogadro's number where you're looking for that uh, singular drop on top of um, that monolayer. It's uh, very much the same principle. So you're going to do that with your unknown. 
um, concentration of acid until you have reached within 5% difference um, between two trials. So after you've done that, then you're going to um, calculate out the concentration. Now those calculations are, uh, are done or are written out for you of what you're going to be uh, doing and based on your lab you're either going to do the pre-lab calculation work before as your pre-lab or you're going to do it um, while your instructor is teaching. Um, so you'll have a little bit of um, practice doing these calculations um, so don't worry too much about that. But then after you finished calculating your um, your unknown concentration of hydrochloric acid, you're then going to do the, um, you're going to then find the concentration of, um, sorry, you're going to then find the molar mass of a um, acid that is a solid. Um, you'll do that very simply. Um, you're going to take um, the mass that will be provided right uh, in the balance and you're going to get between 0.2 and 0.4 grams of the solid unknown acid. And um, you're going to want to record, just like we've always done, every digit that the balance gives you. So all the way out to the third place. Um, then you're going to uh, put that into your flask. And um, so uh, that way you'll record the exact mass. And then you're going to add between 15 and 25 milliliters of water. Now, all of these, um, all of these acids and bases are um, dissolved, or, or you are using solvent water as a solvent. So uh, you're going to want to find the concentration um, of that acid in that water, and that's how we get the different concentrations of the acids and bases um, based on what they are in water. Then you're going to put indicator into that, uh, into that beaker or that flask with the water um, and the unknown acid, and you're going to titrate it. Um, and you're going to compare the results you have with someone who's done the same unknown as you. So each one um, is labeled with A or B. There's just two. Um, so find another group that has found has doing A if you're doing A or find the other group that's been doing B. Um, remember another uh, key thing just like when reading in the graduated cylinders is that you're gonna read the burette from the bottom of the um, meniscus. So remember that the meniscus um, you have the sides of your container and then the meniscus is the very um, it's kinda looks like a bowl within the burette so you're going to read the very bottom of that. Um, and so that is the lab um, that you're going to be doing for this week. It's a fun lab. Then you're going to do a little bit of uh, statistical analysis on the data, and you're going to draw some conclusions um, based off that. Um, it's a fun lab. Enjoy it. Uh, we'll see you guys this week.